Hi Dragonflies! In the last video we made two tiny sketchbooks that you can make with the watercolor paper you normally use and some pretty scraps of paper for the cover. In this video I'm going to show you two more quick and easy sketchbooks that you can make from your own watercolor paper and keep in mind you can make these any size you like. Today's first example is really a pretty binding variation for the post bound or binder clip bound sketchbook that we did last time, and also a slightly different way of wrapping the cover. With that sketchbook, we took some loose sheets and wrapped them in a cover, kind of like a matchbook cover, and then just used some binder clips to hold everything temporarily while we're working in the field. And then when we were ready to bind it, at least semi-permanently, we punched holes in our pages and used these screw binding posts. And I'll let you watch the previous video to learn more about that. For this example, I'm going to start again from 9 by 12 paper because that's a common size. You can obviously do this with other sizes. And I've cut my paper into quarters so that the sheets are 4.5 by 6. And this time, instead of making my cover open like a matchbook cover, I'm going to punch my holes and do my binding on the other side, more like a conventional book cover with a little flap closure. And to accommodate the thickness of a few more pages, I'm going to crease my cover so that it has kind of a spine like a regular book. And this will make it easier to bind nicely. Now I'll punch my holes in the front cover and use those as guides to mark the rest of the pages so I know where to punch the holes and to mark the back cover as well. And I goofed here and made my holes a little closer than I should have. It would probably be better if they were more like a half an inch in so I don't put too much stress on those holes right at the edge of the page. And especially for a book with more pages or larger pages, you might want to come in a bit farther from the edge than I did. So the binding we're going to do is a type of Japanese stab binding, and you can find lots of instructions on this. So if you fall in love with this, you can find lots of ways to do this. And it's quite easy, even though it looks a little complicated. What you're going to do is take a piece of ribbon or cord and for this variation, about six or seven times the height of the book is enough to do the binding that we're going to do. And it's handy to have something that you can poke the end through with or grab the end with. Or if you're using cord, you can use a big darning needle to thread it through the holes. I'm using tweezers for this example to help me push it through or pull it through. So we'll line up all our holes. And then I'm going to thread both ends through from front to back. You can do this from one end to the other, but I find it easier to remember what I'm doing if I do the same thing to both ends. So for this simple version, you can get away with this and it makes it easier, I think. So I put both ends through from front to back and then I make sure that I have the same length tails on the back. Next, I'm going to take one of my tails and wrap it around the spine and back through the hole in the front. And then I'll do the same thing on the other end, around the spine and back through the hole in the front. Now I'll take each tail again across the spine, but this time I'll put it into the opposite hole so I get a crisscross pattern. And now I'm going to loop each tail once again around the spine and back through the same hole. Same thing on both ends as before. 
And if my ribbon gets twisted, I try to flatten it out so that it lays nice and smooth. And I'm trying to keep a bit of tension on my lines so that everything is nice and snug. Now I'm going to loop each tail around the end of the book, the top and the bottom of the book, and feed it again back through the same hole. And then once again, right around the spine and back through the same hole. These loops that go straight around the spine help keep everything snug. After you've made all your loops at the top and the bottom, you can flip it over and tie the ends on the back in a bow. Or you could start on the other side and have your bow on the top. But since this book is going to go on a shelf for me, I prefer to do my knot inside the cover. So I'm going to bring both ends up close to one of the holes, and then I will feed them inside that hole, but not through the whole book, just through the cover. And I go ahead and feed the other end of my ribbon through as well. And then I tie a knot. And what happens is that knot sits inside the hole and it's pretty well concealed from both inside and outside the book. Then I snip off the long ends, leaving myself usually an inch or two of tail. And what I'm going to do is glue that or tape that right along the spine there inside the back cover of the book. So if you've ever wanted to make a travel journal but you're afraid you can't pull off every sketch being one that you want to share with people, this is a nice way to only do a temporary binding when you're traveling and then when you come home you can bind it and make this pretty cover. Still need to glue those ends. And I like to have this little extra piece so that I can use a couple of Velcro dots to make a closure, but you could just trim it straight like a regular book cover. And I also have this cute little paper punch that rounds the corners. So you can dress it up with other things if you want to, or you can just leave it really simple. And that ribbon binding actually makes it feel kind of special, even if you don't add any more bells and whistles. Our last example is actually bound like a traditional book, but with just a few pages, which means we can avoid a lot of bookbinding complications. I'm going to start again from a 9 by 12 sheet of paper, cut it in half, and then fold those halves in half again. For my little example book, I used two 9 by 12 sheets of paper, so I actually have four of these folded sheets. When I'm done, my book will have eight physical pages, or 16 sides. That seems kind of small compared to most sketchbooks, but it's actually a pretty good size to not be too intimidating. I don't have to feel pressured to fill a great big sketchbook, and also, by keeping the number of pages small, I can use a very simple binding procedure. So what I'm going to do is nest all my folded sheets together and then nest them inside my cover. And with the paper that I chose for the cover, I have enough that I could fold it over and make that little flap closure with the Velcro dots. But I actually kind of like the cover as it was, so I think I will probably trim that back cover even with the pages. I've punched two holes that go all the way through all the pages and the cover. I used an awl for this, but you could use a skewer or a darning needle or any sort of pointy object that is strong enough for you to work your way all the way through. And I just make my holes, oh, about a quarter to a third of the way down from the bottom and a quarter to a third of the way down from the top. It doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm going to take a length of some sort of strong cord or thread. If you don't have anything else, dental floss works great. And I need a length that's about twice the height of my book, plus some extra to tie knots and be able to sew more easily. And now I'm just 
going to use a darning needle to pull my thread through from inside to outside on both ends. And now the super simple version of this would be to just go ahead and tie a knot and have your knot here exposed on the outside. Or with one additional step, we can conceal the knot. I'll pull up the cover and pull one tail out so that it's through all the pages, but not the cover. And then I'll thread the other end so that it's inside the cover. And we'll just tie our knot inside the cover like we did with the Japanese stab binding. And once again, I'll cut the ends and leave myself a little bit of a tail, which I will either glue or tape right there in the crease to make sure that it doesn't come untied. Some optional extra steps. You'll notice that the pages don't all line up completely once they've been folded around each other. And since I'm going to trim the back cover, I decided I would just trim both covers and all the pages. So I'm going to lay them down. I think I'll do the pages first so I can see what I'm doing and just trim them off so that they're all even like a real live book. And then I'll trim the covers so that they're even with the pages. And then since I have this tool for rounding the corners and I really enjoy using it, I'm going to go ahead and do that, but that's totally optional, probably a little excessive if we're trying to make these low stress. And I happen to have this elastic from another notebook, so I decided I would make an elastic closure. You could also use just a regular piece of elastic, and I actually think a knot might taped down more securely than this little metal connector did. I had not real good success with getting this to stay in place. Maybe I need some tape with better adhesive. But you punch a hole, put your knot through there or your connector, and then you have a little elastic closure. To be honest, I probably wouldn't do all those extra steps unless maybe the sketchbook turned out to be really fabulous and I wanted to share it. So there are four ideas, two in the last video, two in this video, for simple sketchbooks you can make that have good quality water paper, the same paper you use for all your paintings so it's familiar and they're quick and easy to make. They don't require any special tools. They don't cost you a fortune and you don't have to feel pressured to do lots and lots of fabulous sketches because you can put just a few pages in there. If you're just starting out, this can help free you from feeling like you have one ugly sketch and it ruins the whole sketchbook. You can just make another one. And of course, with this one, you could pretty easily snip that thread, move pages around, add, delete, and sew it again. With the other two, you could leave the post bound or binder clips on until you're ready to bind them more permanently. And then if you have one that you want to share with other people, find a nice cover, make a pretty binding, and they're actually quite charming. So give it a try. Make one of these simple, low-stress sketchbooks. Easy to make with things you probably already have around. Easy to sketch in because it's the paper you're familiar with, and it didn't cost you a fortune. So I hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you next time.